something we have to go through with our athletes a lot at this time of year. So Christmas break, New Year's Eve, any time when there's kind of celebrations happening is the effect that alcohol is going to have on their training. Today's paper is a randomized control trial looking at the direct effect of alcohol consumption post-resistance exercise. So this week's paper is coming from the United States. The title of the paper is Effect of Acute Alcohol Ingestion on Resistance Exercise Induced mTORC1 Signaling in Human Muscle. So what we had was 10 men, 9 women involved in an interventional trial where they did the Smith machine squats. So one bout of acute resistance exercise training. And in 28 liters again, we had another acute bout of exercise training. So we'd randomly signed groups. They were given alcohol ingestion after they did the Smith machine squats. So the session they did during the Smith machine was just 6 by 10 on the Smith machine. If they were assisted for the reps, if they couldn't complete all the reps, 6 by 10. This was done at approximately 80% of their 1RM, which was done on a familiarization session a couple of weeks prior. So we'll, as you've seen, if you've watched the last couple of weeks, this is fairly standard. So we'll have people a fairly standard exercise that people can do and then they'll go ahead and find their 1RM and a familiarization session in a couple of days or a few weeks beforehand so they get familiar with the exercise or movement that they're doing and the piece of testing equipment so there's no kind of you know observer infect or uh, kind of coordination phase adaptions that might occur if you are brand new to an exercise so they give them a couple a session just to find their 1RM and get used to the piece of equipment. So the protocol was 20 minutes post-exercise, they were given either alcohol or placebo, and this was matched to their kilograms, so or grams of alcohol per kilogram of body weight. Measurements taken in this case was from the vastus lateralis. It was basically the outside of the quad, so there was kind of three proteins analyzed. There was the uh, mTOR, or specifically in this case, what we're concerned about for muscle protein synthesis would be mTORC1, which is mammalian or mechanistic target of rapamycin complex 1. Then we had S6K1, which is S6 uh, kinase 1, which is a just a kinase, basically. And then we had 4EBP1, which is like a regulatory protein. Uh, 4EBP1 and S6K1 are just kind of downstream of mTORC1, so they're kind of related. S6K1 would be fairly well established in terms of some of its understanding or its mechanisms of action, whereas 4EBP1 is not fully well understood, so I imagine that's why they selected it. These three are analyzed from the vastus lateralis muscle biopsy after the two sessions. For the results section then, the three proteins analyzed were mTOR, in particular mTOR C1, S6K1, and 4EBP1. There were significant findings in the mTOR pathway, so at three plus hours post-resistance exercise, the placebo group were found to have higher levels of mTOR phosphorylation, this interaction was found to be higher in males than it was in females, but the reaction or the interaction was also significant with female groups. For the S6K1 pathway, very, very similar to mTOR. So we find three plus hours post, uh, we're finding placebo groups have higher levels of phosphorylation in S6K1. This doesn't correspond though when we look at female groups. So in male groups, we have significant interactions. In female groups, we don't have significant interactions, but we do see trends from that group. The last one then is 4EBP1. We don't see any significant data here. So we don't see significant data for three hours post or five hours post. Uh, and we don't see any difference between males and females with this group. But there definitely is some significant findings in the mTOR group and in the S6K1 group. In short, what we got from that study was alcohol is bad for gains yeah terrible but it looks it yeah look it look so obviously we have the obvious factors right so if you were to take alcohol consumption you were to train the day after alcohol you probably didn't eat great food you probably might have eaten more food than you normally would have might have made poor lifestyle choices poor li like stress the stress of those poor <laughs> lifestyles that you, that you made the night before like heightened levels of anxiety the training the day after would be terrible usually um so it's not going to productive but then there's often that kind of question mark around alcohol is does it actually impact your gains like is there biochemical you know results from alcohol like does it impact them negatively and i think this one kind of answered the question fairly well obviously you can go a lot more in depth but it's a it's a very good um it's a decent kind of point you know because people do ask us a lot you know like a one to one clients or q and a's and stuff and we do them people ask does is it okay do i drink do, does fit drink do you drink before training or like do you drink after training yeah is any problem like how much can i drink before it causes an issue yeah i think there's value in this study 
obviously this is like what we might call like a gateway study where with Dave, it's pretty broad. The group is pretty small in terms of the overall scientific power of it. It's not huge, but it's still pretty rigorous. Uh, the other kind of valuable piece of this is that it looked at time, different time stamps, right? So three hours post, five hours post. And the thing, like the main takeaway I'd have here is the three hours post is where all the significant interactions happened. There was one significant interaction at five hours post, but for the vast majority of the people, so for males and females, they're seeing interactions at three hours plus. Uh, what that kind of points me towards will be if we have athletes who are saying, okay, for these next two or three days, I'm at a wedding or I have a, like, you know, I'm going to be out on New Year's Eve. Then if it's like a muscular hypertrophy session or even if it's like a general strength training session, they should be do like spreading that out from alcohol consumption as much as they can. Uh, and looking at those kind of trying to limit those direct influence on the muscle protein synthesis signaling as possible. So if you it, mTOR, you may have heard of it like randomly. You might have heard it from people who talk about you know um, what do they call that life extension? Nerds. No, what is the life? What's the, what do they call that thing? You know, um, longevity. Longevity. You know, people talk about like inhibiting mTOR or you know just eating enough protein to have enough mTOR to maintain your muscle mass or whatever. People trying to live as long as possible or whatever. So mTOR basically mTOR one is usually the one that's involved in um anabolic processes the most are what we're concerned about so they've done studies like in rats where they've in inhibited mTOR from or mTORC1 from its action and basically there was no mus muscle protein synthesis so it's a fairly like well established that if you it's a, it's fairly while you can say for example in studies like this you can say it conclusively inhibits your gains it's very very likely like you can infer from this like that you can go step one if it stops in rats if i do this long term it's probably going to stop the gains so i know they've only done one acute session here for example obviously it's very hard to equate muscle gain like we don't know how much muscle they would have gained over six weeks yeah and if you do another six weeks where they didn't drink alcohol and stuff like that i think it's clear enough in its results to suggest that it's not good for gains and to be honest the likelihood is you're going to drink a lot more alcohol well what most, was the dosaging uh, it was given like kilos per body. I didn't mark it out. I don't know what it would be because it's in grams of alcohol per kilos of body weight. So like realistically, we know they didn't get them hammered. Like they probably got them <laughs> slightly like just a mild amount yeah. of alcohol in it. Realistically, anyone who's going drinking or anyone we know are probably going to be absolutely sauced after alcohol. So hey. no, realistically, no, look, we know. We know Ian has a problem. <laughs> no, but if people are drinking, it's not going to be as little alcohol as they got from that. Realistically, yeah. it's going to be far in excess of what you're doing. So I think it's probably safe to say that the dose is dose respondent, you know, so the more alcohol you get, probably the more you'll suppress your mTORC1 signaling and the more you'll reduce your gain. So the less you'll get out of that prior session. So if you did a very heavy session earlier that morning in terms of, you know, a lot of volume or whatever, the more alcohol you drink later in the day, I think there's a good chance you'll probably end up with less gains than you would have. And the more alcohol you, you do consume that night, it's very possible that you will, you know, for example, Fitz said, then after three hours, it was significant. And after five hours, it's a little bit less than three hours. But obviously, it takes a certain amount of time for you to metabolize alcohol. Yeah. So if you had an excessive amount of alcohol compared to what they were given, it's very, very possible that, you know, it would be a worse scenario and it would have been dose respondent or to a certain level before it just goes terrible. That's a great point, actually. In this study, there it, we can't see dose interactions mm -hmm. because there, it's just like a unified dose. But when you tend to see a, a time interaction... So like a decaying, like a decaying factor like alcohol or the processing of alcohol, when you see that as a significant interaction across like a lot of the factors in the study, you can pretty much infer that there's going to be a dose response. Yeah, like so there's only a certain limit or a certain speed at which you can metabolize alcohol. So you can imagine they probably didn't hit their limit realistically, yeah. but if they're absolutely legless, they probably would have hit that limit. And then over a certain period of time, your anabolic signaling would have been blunted until all that alcohol was metabolized. They didn't particularly go into how it interacts, like how it in inhibits the mTOR pathways or the, you know, the um, subsequent S6K1 or 4EBP1 lower down the pathway. But essentially, we know that it does. It doesn't look like alcohol is good to gains. I hope that's not a shock to anyone. I hope you really don't think. It is interesting that, you know, after... So sometimes people yeah. think, you know, I did my training and I wasn't hungover and I didn't have alcohol the night before, so I got my good training. But it's kind of unfortunate to see that it might inhibit your gains from the... During the recovery process. 
Uh, one interesting thing about this though, so a lot of people that are watching us, of course, are strength based, you know, and a hypertrophy is only a small part of strength gaining. It's interesting to see, does it impact, you know, like neurological gains? Does it impact, you know, learning skills? Yeah. Like if you learn a skill fresh, so the night before, let's say you had great sleep. Uh, we know that if you get bad sleep after learning a skill, it doesn't solidify as much. So alcohol interferes with your sleep. So you could probably say something that it's not good for learning a skill. Actually, as I think about this, it's probably not good. There's no scenario. Yeah. You probably can't solidify any gains <laughs> having alcohol before or after. Um. The only argument might be that alcohol is fun. It's a stress reliever for some people unless you get, yeah. really, unless you get really sad. Because heightened levels of trait or state anxiety aren't great for making progress with hypertrophy work anyway. Yeah. And they're definitely not good for making progress in terms of neurological adaptation. So... Is there any silver lining to the... Alcohol? Maybe we get... Yeah. Silver lining is happy Christmas. Yeah. Uh, sorry for bringing loads of bad news on a Monday. It's but a, we're it, not here to make friends with you. We're yeah. here to... Yeah. To bring scientific research to the masses on mondays on mondays every monday even though it's a bank holiday in ireland it really is unfortunate that um I, I after wished, training i wish this was like no yeah. no you're grand lads if you if you drink for 12 hours but it has to be exactly eight and a half hours afterwards yeah that would be great news and if they did one where it was before the night before people had drank and then the day after and them torque signaling or their anabolic processes were downplayed yeah, from the night before, then you'd be like, "That's fair enough." That's okay. Yeah. So you you'd know you take your you take your hit then. But yeah. That might be a better scenario. Maybe we should just go and cherry pick a paper that has better news for people. Yeah. So maybe just train the night after you go drinking. So get absolutely <laughs> legless and then go training. If you want to see more videos like this, just go and look at our YouTube page. Uh, we have probably around a hundred videos similar enough to this. Uh, we also have some blog style stuff of how we run the business. If you want to look into our coaching, our programs, just go to seekstrength.com and you can see them there in the store. If you want to listen to us talk, we have the Seek Strength Podcast, which has been actually kind of a thing we've been running longer than YouTube. So there's about 80 odd plus episodes of the Seek Strength Podcast. So not all of them are training based. Some of them recently, the last couple of episodes of Shit Talk, where we just talk nonsense or talk about random things. So if you're looking for something to listen to that's not related to training, check out the Shit Talk. Or to get our main episodes during the week, which comes out like Wednesdays and Thursdays. Yep. We have all kinds of guests. And mostly us.